thank you so much for doing this interview with me. And wow, what an incredible series. I had the chance to see uh, the first and second episode. And I have to say right off the top, personally, it made me angry, especially with the first episode. And the reason why is because all these things that I'm seeing is like, even though it was more blatant than it to me, it's like, especially per, speaking of a person of color, this is still going on. And it's, all I can say is just like, wow. Uh, Charles, I'm going to start off with you. I mean, how do you feel about being part of this? Because in a lot of ways, um, this is television history of this being made, uh, not just in Canada, of course, in the U.S. with CBC and BET. Yeah, I think I think it's um I mean <laughs> it's funny, it's like there's a project and then there's you know all the mechanisms around it. And I think ultimately it's it's um the honor and the and the and the, and, and the feeling right now, fear and terror of it being real and going out to the world is all comes back down to what we've all come together to make and what we've all come together to honor. And it's the story of our ancestors and it's in the story of our family and the story of our community um, that we have not seen, you know, um, rendered in our our history of television in, in, in terms of a series like so this is this is um, this is new territory and um, but but want, but it's familiar territory. Um, with the kind of stories that we've all been gravitating in our own individual ways of, of what we've been trying to communicate uh, uh, in the film and television world. So um, it's deeply uh, satisfying to know that, that, that a creative team um, with our varied experiences can find a way to come together to tell this one thing and we've all touched it. Like, so it's, it's a, that in itself is a, is a uh, I mean, it's like an actor finding their dream role. They happen once in a lifetime and you know, win, lose, fail, whatever, wherever we go from here it's 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 an experience that i think that um that is like it's, it's an untouchable experience so so um i'm hoping people are touched by the material and, and the show yeah i think they definitely will too uh and marie i want to ask you uh, one of the things i really did enjoy about uh watching this was the fact and you got to really listen in how the language is being used and when i say that because at one point you know you can hear that Caribbean flavor in there mixed in with Canadian. I really enjoyed that. Can you talk about that? Because I, I want people to really pay attention because this really is a representation of Black Canada back then. Uh, <clears throat> yes, a lot of our porters were tapped or um, recruited out of the Caribbean. So from the Caribbean to Canada, we wanted to reflect not only the history, but the culture that represents our country, which is so broad and the sounds and, you know, I, I'm Jamaican, so we like to feel like we're the only island, but we, we have not other- not the only island. <laughs> we have other sounds. Points, Anne-Marie, your points. <laughs> and, uh, you know, some of it is scripted and some of it is the actors knowing the, the the genesis of these characters and knowing their stories and taking them to heart and really finding their own way with their own voices and expression. So part of that is scripted, part of that is research, part of that is history, part of that is an actor's choice and it, it mixes together to make something really special. And I think it's a sound we've been, we've been wanting to hear for a very long time. Arnold, I want to ask you, um, you know, one of the things that I found that was interesting, I don't want to give too much away because I want folks to watch it in the same eyes that I did too. There was a scene in the beginning where the friends are getting get together, getting ready to go to work, and how people are looking up to them as they're heading to the train station. But then once they get to the train station, it's almost like reality sets in. Can you talk about that, please? Because what a transfer for those characters to have to go through. Well, the, the, the porters in the communities were the people that were bringing in the majority of the money. And the way they were looked upon and respected in the community was that on high. You know, uh, people used to push their daughters towards these porters because obviously these men were making steady income, not a lot of income, but steady income. They dress well. You know, those are the guys that went to the tailors in the communities and had the money enough to get the fly suits and that sort of aspect. 
but once they got to work, just like how you would have them speaking Patois or, or you know, in accents back in the community, once they got on the train, they had to switch, switch or code switching, and now they had to be subservient, so to speak. But the beauty of, uh, I believe, our show is that we do showcase that, but we also showcase the strength that these men, because let's be honest, in other movies or other depictions of these, we don't go home with these individuals. We don't get to see their perspective. So even when they're on the train, we can still see that resilience against that or how they bonded together to get over that sort of um, uh, subservient that was put upon them. You know, there are times when you can hear them talking back to Dinger, you know, talking about why are they you know, why are they getting demerit points? They're standing up for themselves. And um, in a roundabout way, this isn't really answering your question, but I think that bonding of individuals back then is almost similar to us bonding together to get a show like this done and saying no to the, the walls that we run into and saying no to, yes, our shows are profitable and so on and so on. And I think that bonding is something that we, like Charles always says, the ancestors of it, I think, manifested itself in, into us. And Marsha, the women go through their own struggles, too, in, you know, being the, the, the home caregivers uh, out at work, um, having to deal with people who are looking at them as, as sexual objects. Can you talk about that, please? Because that's that's something that's, again, on a whole different level and what they are dealing with during those times. Yeah, um, it was so important to us to kind of look at the women in the community too. And, you know, the Porter story is really a story about the women in the community as well. And you'll certainly, if you do any reading about the Porters and about the process of starting the Black Union, you'll see how important the women are to that movement. But even beyond that, you know, there are women in the community who also have dreams, who also have their aspirations and have things that they're fighting for and obstacles they're coming up against either based on the time or the circumstances or the people around them. And, and with the in both of our female characters story, Marlene and Lucy, we really felt like it, they were more community stories and it wasn't just that kind of outside uh, obstacle. It was like obstacles within our own community. And it was important for us to take a look at that as well as everything else. So, you know, we're really, um, we really love to show how the women, just like the men are resisting and fighting and dreaming and overcoming. RG, I'm not first I'm not surprised that you're involved with this. You and Charles. I expect the two of you being involved with this. You get the last question, my friend. What do you hope that folks will get from this? Like I said, for me, it was damn, I see, of course, which I've always known how hard it was for them just to be able to get that respect. Um, and again, I feel like it's still going on, but it's being done in a different way. Yeah, I think for me, um, you know, what I hope that people really get from this show is A, that we were here, we've been here, we're still here, you know what I mean? Uh, our community runs deep and long in uh, Canada's history, even though you may not have been taught that in, the, in, in your school. Um, so for, for it to hopefully uh, bring to light uh, the the you know the the struggles and the triumph of these people uh, who really laid the groundwork again, and I'll say it again. I've been saying it for all of us working black and, and people of color in this country that now have a chance to tell a story like this, or now have a chance to work in broadcasting, or now have a chance to work in, in so many of the other fields, right? These, these people, this community spawned the first black union, which allowed them to have the strength to pursue things. So um, it's, a, it's a universal uh, Canadian story. I hope that people get interested in it. Uh, we have dramatized it and made it, uh, you know, we're not doing a documentary. You can go check the documentary as well. You know what I'm saying? But, but we, are, we are based on facts and we're telling the story of these many different types of people and what they did. And uh, I, hope they, uh, I hope people enjoy it. I hope it inspires a new generation as well of storytellers to know that 
you can come together with other creatives that look like us and tell stories from your communities and that it can be successful and it can sell. So I'm very, very, very pleased and happy and honored to be part of this group. And uh, I hope everybody loves it. Thank you so much, folks, for not just putting this together, but telling some truth in history that we need. Thank you.